All right, David, so this is actually a PCAP that we've used in one of our sessions before. This was, do you remember when we did the malware analysis? Yep. Yeah. I'll, I'll link that below. Okay. And the reason why I picked this one to show you some filtering is just because there's a lot, a lot of great stuff in here that's going to be fun to poke at with some filters. So first of all, let's do this. I'm going to just come in here to take a look at these packets. And one thing that we have to do a lot of times right off the bat is look for an IP address. Now, let me back up just a moment, David. I could make this very simple, not just on you and your editors, and we could put up a list of top 10 filters, bam, 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 one to 10, right? But I wanna go through and show you why I use that filter yep. and then how it can be easily remembered, all right? So first, IP address. I mean, how often have we had to do that? I mean, I'm sure you've set one as well, right, David? Yep. Okay, so if I wanna filter on a specific IP, let's just take packet number one. Here we have two addresses. What if I wanna see all traffic coming and going from a specific address? All right, so this one on the right looks kind of fun, 5.1.81.68. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and filter on that. Now, the first thing I gotta ask myself is I, do I want all traffic going to this address or traffic coming from that address or both. Let's just say we want everything going to and from, okay? So to do that, I'm just gonna come up here, I'm gonna type in IP dot. Now this is where Wireshark, so what I'm telling it is I want this to be an IP filter, so using the IP dissector, if you will, it's gonna be one of the IP fields. But which field? Now to do this, I'm just gonna type in IP adder, all right? So first I'm telling Wireshark what field do I want to filter for? Now, when I say adder, that's going to be either source or destination. If I wanna be specific to source or destination, one or the other, this is where I can say ip.src or ip.dst. Now, next question would be, Chris, how do you remember that? Well, if- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? So if I come up here- Do it a million times like you. Oh, well, yeah, for sure, practice is gonna be a big thing. But there's a few little cheats that I have in here because I just tell you, I, I don't like typing in Wireshark. It's not one of my favorite things to do. So I'm gonna come over here, gonna come down into the bottom left, which is my packet output. And if I come down here to my IP addressing, you see source, address, destination address. Now, something that's yep. very cool with Wireshark is that you have a built-in cheat sheet when it comes to the fields. So let's go ahead and have the editor zoom in with me, boom, down to the lower right. You see down here, source address, ip.source. This is going to be pretty small, uh, but if we're zoomed in on it, it's going to look nice and big. You can see in the parentheses there, there's a field name. So when I click on anything in Wireshark, anything at all, if that field can be filtered for, the syntax for identifying that filter is gonna be in that little parentheses. So there's, a, there's your first thing with Wireshark. All of this memorization you have to do with the syntax and remembering the dots and the slashes and all the things, right there we have a cheat sheet for field name. So if I forget ip.source, just go to the source address field of IP and then down here on the little right, ip.source. Same with destination ip.destination. Now, if it's either one, what I do, and this is just me, this is what my eyes have gotten used to doing. Usually it's something that's simple to remember, like for example, ADDR, right? A part of the address. So that's where it's something that we can just get used to, ADDR. And that will let us do either one. So I'm gonna do equals equals, I'm gonna do 5.1.81.68. And boom, there's my address filter for that single IP. If I take a peek, my eyes just automatically, it just does it, David. I'm just walking you through what I'm looking at right now. If I come down here to displayed, you can see the number of packets that I have is 12,953, but of that 12,953, uh, 683 are displayed. Okay, let's back up. So there's a simple address filter. Now to me already, that was too much typing. So now I'm gonna show you, you can type <laughs> in a filter or just drag and drop is a lot easier. Okay, if I come up here to the top, I just remove that filter. So now what I can do is, and this is the real world stuff. This is actually what I really do, David. I don't type in IPs because first of all, I, I just don't want to. I'm lazy, say it, it's fine. Um, if I come up here to any of these fields, if you look at the top up here, this whole top like packet list area, if you think about it almost like an Excel spreadsheet, each one of these little cells has a piece of data in it in a certain yeah. category. So for example, here, here's an IP address, 5.1.81.68. That is in the destination column. So what I can do is I can just take this IP, drag, I'm literally clicking it right now. I just drag it and drop it up top. And That's nice. because that was the destination, now it automatically was set the filter for me. So now uh, all I gotta do is go, you know what? I didn't want destination. 
I wanted everything. So now I have both ways. So that's a faster way to set a filter. If you could just find it in your PCAP, drag it upstairs and either fix the filter or fix the destination or source, depending on what you're going for, that's a quick way to set a filter for an IP address. That's great. And it's IP because it's not IPv6, right? That, You'd have to type IPv6 for, on the, if, cause this is IPv4, right? Exactly, yes. Um, now for me, here's what I do with v6, just because that can be, talk about a lot of typing. Usually if I'm looking for a v6 thing, which I think in this PCAP, I don't, I don't have any IPv6. No, I don't, David. So I can't demo it, but what I do is I'll really look for that address. What I'll first do is just do ip.v, sorry, v6, and then I'll find whatever packets match it. And then I can come down and look for the address I'm looking for. And that's where I really use my drag and drop because come on, who wants to type all that out? And one other little cheat that I do is I'll come up to statistics endpoints. Yep. And what this does is it allows me to see all the addresses. And from here, instead of scrolling and scrolling and looking, I can go, ooh, that's the one I'm interested in. I click it, right click, apply as filter, selected. Oh. So from the statistical view, this is where I can also select an address. It'll pop me back into the analyzer and it'll give me both directions for that one IP. That's also really useful because if I come up here to stats again, let's go back to endpoints. To CV6, I might have to activate that field here. Right now mine was deactivated, but if I do have V6, I can come over here. I can look at all of the entries here in a list and I can right click and I can filter for the one I'm interested in. I always like to ask you the real world stuff because you're doing this all the time and companies send you these PCAPs all the time. Do you see a lot of IPv6 or is it still mainly IPv4? That's a great question. And I think the word that I would use is I'm seeing more IPv6. Uh, okay. I, I wouldn't say a lot, but it's something that, um, you know, compared to 10 years ago, it's definitely something that's growing. However, still seeing a whole lot of v4. But most of your troubleshooting is IPv4 stuff. I would say today it's still mostly v4, yes. I'd say that's an accurate that's statement.